Shout out to the Swami, man. Shout out to Swami for that $20 guitar. I'm going to steal the knife from Harry Styles. I don't care. I can't smell that dress. I can't smell that That thing literally starts cooking. Oh, <laughs> Gotta pop a cold one. Oh, it's kind of like uh, one of our songs on Wasted. Um, I crack oh, yeah. a uh, modelo open at like 10 a.m. recording the, vo the vocals. <laughs> I'm like, dude, Frank, record this. He's like, okay, it's all. <laughs> Frank, there's nothing like practical sound effects. Hell yeah. Thanks for having us here, man. Never stepped foot in one of these. <laughs> I'm honored. In, in a room? You've never been in a room before? No. <laughs> what, what's this thing? It's a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of Coachella videos on my main YouTube channel. It's the first time I get an actual artist that's playing the festival as a guest. I'm like super happy for you guys and this oh, is just thank amazing. You. Thank, oh, yeah. you. thank you, Angel. Appreciate that. <laughs> How did you guys get invited to play Coachella? I got the email. I think I took a little screenshot of it. It was uh, the summer of 2019 in August. Yeah. And uh, they sent me the email and I was like, here it is. And then I just took a screenshot, shared it with them and they're like, Wow. Like, you know, I don't know where they were, but I was probably at home. I was driving. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> almost well, how was, almost <laughs> Do you think it was, do you have to do like a double take? Do you like freak out? Do you think it was like spam? It's all. You've been invited to play yeah. the biggest festival in the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, I kind of actually like pinch myself, almost punch myself a little bit in the <laughs> face. I was like, nah. Once she sent us a screenshot, I called Marco. And then I was like, I think this is real. <laughs> yeah, you called me. I was at work. Yeah. And you said, check your phone. And I was like, what are you talking about? Check your phone. And then I check my phone. And he goes, yeah, that's real. I'm like, what? <laughs> and you said, you're like, how do you feel about playing with What do you mean? Like, I got an email, dude. <laughs> like, oh. How do you feel? <laughs> Pretty damn good. I I would like to say that I was like in shock. I, it was it felt it feels more like a manifestation rather than like a surprise. It's something that uh, I've personally have been dreaming for for a long time. You know, like you go, you know, a lot of Coachella. You've been to, I want to say almost all of them, <laughs> and I've been to a lot too. And every year, it's just like ah. Oh, want to be up there you know and so it just felt really good are you guys nervous excited scared well, prepared we've done, we've done what joshua tree and we did cella we did the, the tamale festival um when we got the news in 2020 i was like I, in my, personally for me i was like i don't know if we're ready or me i don't know if i'm ready i don't know how i'm gonna handle it but <laughs> in the meantime from when the first when we got the news and then it got canceled from that point on until this we have done no i'm prepared for this this is yeah. i'm ready for it still nervous though <laughs> a little nervous a little nervous <laughs> yeah, yeah, trying but, not to freak out yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like in a week out. almost like yeah <laughs> you might bump into harry styles <laughs> and he might be like don't touch me <laughs> <laughs> and you might tell him sign my watermelon right here <laughs> Take one of those baby watermelons yeah. in your bag. Hell yeah. <laughs> really perfecting what we do. Really looking at all the little small nooks and crannies in which we never looked into before. So going into this, oh man, I feel way ready. Mm -hmm. More more than ready. Two years ago, it was, I was a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just get more experience playing, more experience practicing the songs. Well, we're dropping a new dropping album a new pretty album. soon. We uh, just shared a music video that we have for the single. Yeah, that no, that music video is dope. You guys did oh. at the Palm Springs Museum, right? Yeah. The yeah. song is so catchy. Uh, and then yeah. I love the, like, one take where you guys just walk in and then you that, guys pull out with the guitars behind her. Like, yeah. yeah. That was, that was, that was about <laughs> 50 to 60 takes of constantly messing up. Yeah. Constantly oh, it was, restarting. So it was a lot of takes. I think yeah. we ended up picking the. So many false starts. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> so I was going to, like, change outfits at some point. Yeah. And walking. I'm like, okay, this. <laughs> Changing outfits in the middle of one <laughs> take. So yeah. uh, I do remember you being behind a tree and me ripping I off a skirt look. from you, <laughs> <laughs> and no, then you running back in. Yeah, there was no it when we were doing it when we were filming the music video. There was nobody on the streets, right? It's the the pandemic had just. It was like in June, right? It was yeah, in it was June, still there, so yes. it was very very much there present you know so going to palm springs and seeing like no cars and no life you know it was it was surreal to be there and doing any other time we wouldn't be able to do this you know but so i hope that people see that and they're like oh you know know that it was during like 2020 summer 
pandemic, like, and we just still, you know, it's outdoors. So I think we were safe. We felt safe enough, but we were afraid for a long time, you know, and we still are very careful. I know that we are very careful still. I don't feel like I'm the only one that's cautious. You know, we are all very cautious of, of it and very aware of like what it has done to us and to our friends and family. So so recording that is always going to be like a reminder of like, dang, like the times. This was, the yeah, time, this it's was a step scary. in history. It's just the memory. It, making videos and looking back, it's like, it just brings so many memories. You're going to have memories from all those takes that you did. Like you said, have you ever done another music video before that one? I, I, I was looking, I didn't really see any. Um, we, we did one because we wanted to submit uh, for Tachiba. <laughs> so we... Uh, our buddies um, up in the high desert uh, from what then was a Desert Rhythm Project um, helped us a lot. They, uh, Brianna Barrow kind of just filmed me walking down, you know, it was at their, their studio at the time. I actually was a different lineup. It was Rob Peterson on drums, James uh, Gastelum on bass, and Christian and I. And we recorded Novasta. We submitted that to, to Chiba. That was like the only thing that I had ever really recorded. Um, but this, uh, everything is the first music video that that we that we filmed. So it, it I don't know, it just felt. First music video special. I ever filmed. <laughs> what are you guys thinking about doing a music video for Coachella Gold? Oh yeah, that's. Yeah, we've had that in the works for a yeah. long time. Yeah. We do want to do a music video for Coachella Gold. Um, so we got a couple of, uh, photographers um that are going to accompany us and um you know uh we'll try to do everything uh, you know follow the rules and stuff but we're going to get a lot of b-roll going to get them come through like you know one of the last like rehearsals and we're going to get a little b-roll we're going to just uh, start gathering content for Coachella Gold yeah that's awesome yeah uh, what was like the like Golden Voice already kind of gave you guys the set times, what time you're performing, and everything. Any details on? I know, but you probably can't tell about it. But like, no, we we haven't. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was like a true so. face of like, no, they Just haven't. The you guys have a stage that you guys are playing? They, they, they haven't told you. Not even oh stage. yeah, we're gonna play in the Sonora Ten. Sonora Ten, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Indoors. So yeah, AC. AC. Yeah, you know, yeah. For all my my family, my tias, and you know, they never <laughs> been, so I don't wanna. I'm gonna get a little heat stroke. Look at We need the AC. <laughs> we we're playing at, at the. The cello stage or something, right, 100 imagine. degrees, that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> melting like so. your guitars, like, like, you're literally melting your guitar yeah. on stage. Dude, get this damn thing off of me. <laughs> At 11 a.m. and shit. <laughs> no, um, so, yeah, right. so not a ten. Uh, our, our set is 30 minutes. Oh, Do you know what time you're playing? No. You play on Friday, right? Yes, the Fridays, both the both 15th Fridays, and the yeah. 22nd. I always give you guys a shout out whenever I can Thank make you. videos. Yeah. Um, some people are like, oh, yeah, we're going to check out Giselle Wu because uh, I like to support locals, you know, and I think that's awesome you guys get the opportunity. And we haven't had Coachella. I mean, how was it for you guys? I know there's bigger problems, like the world it was like a month before the festival started. Everything kind of shut down. So It was terrifying just because, um, you know, I've been hearing a lot of people get sick. We started, I, I don't think anyone had this ever experienced, like everything just shut down immediately, yeah. you know, and um my grandmother lives with me too, and I had been hearing about like people passing away. So, you know, we all just kind of, you know, shut ourselves away for a little bit. Like, we still kept in contact. But on top of that, and then not being able to play Coachella either, it was just like, well, who am I now? <laughs> you know, I can't be yeah. a musician, you know. I'm, now we have to be a person, you know. But it's like, okay, aside from music, aside from what I love to do and who I am as a, you know, artist, what I, what I do without that, man. You know, it's a lot of back and forth, you know, you kind of have to sit down. I mean, definitely a lot of like nights where you just think like, oh man, you know, without you kind of come to realize, wow, without this part of myself, I really am not nothing else. You know, I just play video games, I eat food, I go to work, <laughs> that, you know, that's it, you know, and having this side of myself is like, oh yeah, this is who I am. This is the part of me that like, you know, I want to be able to, you know, share the world and I have, you know three best friends around next, right next to me that I get to do that with. So I, I think coming to that realization finally helped me out and say, yeah, this is where I need to be, you know, this is what I want to do. So at least that was for me and know everyone else had their own experience too. I got like a second job, you know, just kind of working and then you come out of it and then you realize you think 
I don't know, like he said, where you kind of have this identity crisis, right? Where yeah. you're not an artist, you kind of have to put that on hold. And then it was so long that you had to put that on hold that you almost forget coming back into it. You know, it was so weird to have the thought cross my mind, like, well, I'm making really good money. I'm doing all this. Do I really need to play again? And as soon as you get up and play again, it's like no brainer, you know? But having that crisis is like was such a weird you know, it's like it's like an identity thing, and then it's like a, it's like a weird, it's like pseudo depression that you have to deal with, like functionally because you're working and, you know, all this stuff is going on with like people passing away, and it's pretty, it was pretty rough, but it's it's nice that there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel right now, and we come out of it stronger, and again, you know, we kind of are really well prepared this time. Um, you know, because playing live, man, that's that's like my drug. Like, you know, <laughs> I love being in the studio. I love playing my instrument, but like playing live, I've I've never really been like someone to be nervous. But it's like I love, you know, that's <laughs> that's when it comes down to the time. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's, it's a long break mm-hmm. that we had. Yeah, you know, and it's 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 a lot of things to like kind of reel through. And, you know, things that are still affecting our mental health. I think all of us that went through the pandemic, we just have all these weird little quirks and stuff like that and traumas that are left over. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty much aligned with what he said. It was nice to have all the three of us together, you know, and, uh, they're the three of us got each other through that. Also, you know, we kept in contact. And, stayed, stayed as positive as possible, yeah, exactly. like as much as we could, you know, um, I think, uh, collectively, like we knew that it, like with any, at any moment any of us could like break down you know so I think just kind of knowing that and all of us kind of feeling each other out like we're like there's there we can't let that win you know so we just kind of just like push through until like we're and now we're here like you know so time flies too and when you're in the middle of it especially that 2020 year where it felt like every week or every month things were just getting crazier crazier and the world was just you know, the summer. It was like fires. one catastrophe no, after another. Yeah, it was, yeah, like it was fires. Just, <laughs> these, past, these, past, these past two years is just like just nothing but self reflection of who you are. Mm-hmm. You know. And um, I remember feeling a little bit of because I, I I I'm not a, a musician or like an artist like you guys or anything, but me going to shoot videos, um, I, I get that energy like that creative itch. You know, just. No, it course. feels good to just be just recording and make, making videos and meeting other people at these events because there's the, like a Zoom meeting, for example, we were doing this podcast through Zoom. You don't get the connection like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's like something, making jokes about liquid death or whatever, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. like those little things, the human connection, and then you, you do miss it, you know. 2020 was rough, but I think for me as personally, I, I, I feel like it was kind of like a blessing, kind of like, you do have to be human first you know like i think 2019 was just so crazy just i don't know how it was for you guys but for me like it was just super busy every week we were we were were like on a roll we were like sprinting too so So we feel it we feel it and like yeah like you said i also agree with the blessing in disguise you know like because it was a mandatory break that everyone had to take you know and sometimes Taking a break is really hard for people. Uh, they don't know how or or they're not allowed to uh, with their work and stuff, you know. So it, it forced us to slow down. Yeah, it was. Now we come out of it with more experience, more, yeah. more grateful that we survived. I mean, when you really think about it, there's a lot of people that didn't make it, you know, two years. And... Um, but things are turning around. It's starting to feel a little more normal. Like you said, still be cautious, but and more normal. The festivals are back. You guys have more events coming after Coachella, and um, hopefully this op- opens more doors for you guys because this is like. Thank you. You could say you played at Coachella, you know, like this is. There's no more music festivals that could top Coachella. So it's like I already played the biggest one. I, I could play the rest of them. Yeah, and that's that that's would be goal. that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Want to get to Mexico, you know, want to be yeah. in the, I want to see our names yeah. on like Besame Mucho, like lineup, you know, mm-hmm. like I want to play like with my gente, you know, so I'm looking forward to like uh, future opportunities that we may 
be granted with, you know. So how would you describe your music? Because I, I, I have trouble describing your music. I'm not like a music savvy person, so no, I'm like, it's okay. I have trouble. <laughs> we all have trouble. <laughs> like we just play music. Pinpoint but, no. it. No, it, I wish because it's just easier to tell someone like you know, what is it like? Um, we play everything. We literally love I music. Love I think we're <laughs> like all like just big lovers of music, so we don't see like black or white you know like we're just like all, all over the place all bets are off it's like yeah. whatever we want to do you know yeah. let's hit a reggae let's hit a cumbia let's, let's hit, hit a, a rock uh-huh. let's hit a ballad let's hit a you know mm-hmm. a <laughs> yeah, again, it's just weird when like you have people ask you the question of what do you guys play and it's you stop and you go i can't tell rock you music run. <laughs> and you question it you're yeah. like do I play rock music? And then you think about everything you did. You're like, what? You know, kind of do like this doo wop thing too. And then we do reggae. <laughs> and then we do cumbia. And then we do boleros. And then we do there's like, like a psychobilly. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a, it's a little. You had to Google it. Kind of eclectic. <laughs> to be cliche, but like, it's a what? Eclectic. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Some people would say the wor- term world music, but I don't know. Well, I wouldn't so know. Your, I wouldn't your, know what your to... practice sessions must be amazing. Just like playing all kinds of sounds, just vibing. Do you guys feel like the energy every time you're playing, like even just practicing, like in a garage or whatever you guys practice? Do you guys just get that every time you're playing the song? Do you just feel like it? it I don't it's, know. it's funny. Like um, a lot of musicians, when well, let's say like in in the practice room, right? When we're playing, we're not really playing for somebody or something like that we literally play for each other the thing about that is though when we play for each other we always take that to the stage with us as well yeah don't get me wrong we'll look into the crowd and we'll acknowledge the crowd we'll do all this stuff but we at least i personally like i play for them Mm -hmm. i play to them Mm i i i and they only hear it i do stupid little jokes with my plane (laughs) and they'll hear it or i'll do a, a dumb dance move that jose will only catch <laughs> and everybody in the crowd will be like that was cool no it's not cool <laughs> dumb. but, but it, it's that energy of like no these are my these are my brothers and my sister i'm gonna play for them this is only for them <laughs> don't get me wrong i love playing in front of a crowd but when i when i play with them on stage i just want to play with them that's all yeah. it is you know just i don't playing the best version of that yeah. song like in unison, yeah. like together, you know. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. How long have you guys been playing? So you guys were playing in other bands before, because I know you have Las Dias. You guys, you play Las like Dias. locally. Yes, uh, we do mostly like as well as Cafe. We'll, we're there like on Sundays, um, and uh, we do more like like private events or you know stuff. Are like you full time musician? Uh, huh? Are you full time? Me, yes. Oh. Me, right now, yes. Um, with Las Dias and the Night Owls, uh, we're staying a little busy. I, too, had to get a, a job. <laughs> oh, well, I don't even know what that... You know, um, I like work sometimes. Dude, that shit was crazy. I, I started working at a, at a cannabis facility, and um, my schedule was like 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. I remember the first few days or the first few days I, w- I would go home and cry because <laughs> my body hurt you know because well first I was pre-rolling you know boom 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 like just there for eight hours doing like, no just rolling. Sentana, pre-rolling I was Damn, like, that's crazy. what the heck is this you, you work know, for so- Jeter or no um uh candescent yeah candescent oh, yeah. out in DHS um so that that was rough, uh, but it was cool because you know get out to thirty, you still have time to do whatever. But then we started, we kind of learned that we could rehearse in the mornings, you know, because uh, they all like have afternoon shifts. So okay. so now and that's when we started playing more together. We 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 played a lot together, like, and we didn't even necessarily have to have a show lined up. We were just meeting because we needed it you know we're like we just need it you know safely i remember the first times like with masks on and stuff you know or whatever but we just jammed the music 
And then, you know, as things started to uh, ease up, uh, we felt a little more comfortable, maybe not, you know, maybe now I can sing and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, I just started rambling and I forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's bad. How long have you guys been playing music? Like all your lives? When did you like discover your passion or influence? Me, I started learn. my dad started teaching me how to play guitar um, when I was a teenager. Um, I want to say between 13, 15. Him and my mom are musicians and they sing. And oh, that's sick. They had a rondalla, I remember, when I was younger. And they'd rehearse at, at the house. Are your parents Mexican? Yeah. My dad was born in Mexico and my mom in Mexico. So, uh, Wu, what was the last name? What's, it, right? It's like my... I've great, always been curious because I know Ricky great, and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, I don't know, Ricky. if it was a stage name once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your real name? No, that is my real name. Are you sure? Yeah, she's sure. It's Giselle Gutierrez. Um, uh, my great-great-grandfather was Chinese. Um... And the only explanation I think I like make we we make the story it was like when in Mexico they were building the railroads and stuff like that, and that's the only thing we can think of. <laughs> have you ever sense. taken like the twenty three and Me know. test? I haven't yet because I don't know how I feel about <laughs> 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 the government having my DNA. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's all a conspiracy <laughs> shit. I know. I don't know. But I mean, it's probably not. It's probably not a conspiracy. Yeah. But. <laughs> I was gonna say, knowing your dad, if your grandfather was like your dad, he probably was just like, you know, I'm just gonna get on a train and go to Mexico. <laughs> That's probably right. just what happened. Let's we'll see what's over there. There's a lot of um, Asian uh, migrants around the border as well. A lot of people that were trying to come to the U.S. They would go to Mexico first and try to cross, and a lot of them end up staying in like border towns. Mexico. And Mexico is like such a diverse culture. People just think like paisas or something, but yeah. it's like there's everything there. There's yeah. like European descent, there's African culture there, German and all kinds of stuff. So the movies here in Hollywood, they literally show Mexicans and they play like a yellow filter. It's like, it's like a common thing. Right. Like every time you see a dirt and like some dirty kids playing soccer right. and like a yellow filter and it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Change the stigma. In it's reality, not, it, it looks pretty much like around here. Like it's the same. Mm -hmm. There's no um, difference. And then many parts way more beautiful badass water like caves and all of that. I think my fascination with music started when I was like I think nine or ten uh Dr. Dre's chronic album 2001 <laughs> and it was the yes. song explosive hey, that's, that's yeah. it was a song explosive and the only <laughs> yeah so hearing that I was like what is that and I would always tell my friend uh my well the, my, fr my best friend who showed me this uh Derek uh, Maciel he was the one that showed me the album the only thing I kept asking him is what is that and he didn't know what it was. He didn't know. I was like, oh, it's guitar and bass and drums. But I was like, what? How do you, how do you do that? that? How do you make that sound? Wow. How do you put all that together? And that started my fascination with music. I started, I was around 15 and 16 when I started making little crappy beats on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I turned 18 one day and I asked my, my mom, my mom asked, asked me, what do you want for your birthday? And I didn't really want an Xbox or a video game. I just said, I want a guitar. And she got me this really shitty guitar from <laughs> the swap meet that didn't stay in tune, but oh, and then three strings on it broke. So I only <laughs> had the lower three strings, and all I could do was like, okay, let me tune it to what I think sounds good. Learned it from there. I was you know, 18 when I really, really got serious about music. That's cool. That's yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out to the swap meet, man. Shout out to the swap meet for that $20 guitar. <laughs> Let's get a sponsorship deal going. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in, uh, my mom, it's funny because both my parents are from Mexico City, uh, but, like, my dad was about, like, the Doors and the Rolling Stones and stuff like yeah. that, and then my mom was, like, about the Beatles, because I guess they had Beatles records in Mexico, like, recorded in Spanish, like, the whole catalog was recorded in Spanish. In Spanish? Spanish? What yeah. the hell? I so, like, I, apparently when they, my mom was growing up, like, people were still, like, obsessed with the Beatles, and uh, so I kind of always had that, and it's funny because, like, as I got older and became... 12, like 11, 12 or something like that, you kind of think, like, oh, I don't want to listen to like my parents. My parents music, music yeah. But it's funny because you end up going back to it. <laughs> but I got kind of into, I think I heard, I think like Stairway to Heaven or something like that once. Um, and then I was just like, I started going down that rabbit hole of like Iron Maiden, ACDC. Yeah, the rock know? face. I, yeah, love, yeah. I had a rock face in middle school. And then <laughs> we all like, have that face. <laughs> Guns N' Roses hit, like Sweet Child of Mine. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, you know? And then, I ended up not getting like the greatest hits album. I got like the the first album, Appetite, 
And then I just was like, what is this? You know, the two guitar sounds, the distortion, but it wasn't metal, you know? It wasn't metal, but it was, like, a little heavier than, like, Led Zeppelin. And, and then I just decided, I just started listening to it over and over again, and I was obsessed with trying to figure out what that sound was. And then I got to, I think I asked for a guitar, like, for three years or something like that. I got a little Squire jam pack, a little $100, like, Squire with the little amp and the the picks and stuff you know i remember that and i picked it up because i was already in band like i was playing clarinet in the middle school band, you know? <laughs> and then as soon as i picked up the guitar it's just like my whole life just changed you know i stopped for better or for worse i kind of would like spend all night practicing like I'm, just as soon as i got the guitar um just spend all night practicing go to school to sleep <laughs> you know I mean luckily I have a decent you. head on my shoulders and I kind of got through like I kind of picked it back up in high school and got through high school but um, I was just obsessed man you, you know, ever just, take the guitar to high school and play nah I, I, I always like stayed in, I, I kept it like to myself for a long time like, yeah. until I was like in a band in like sophomore year or junior year or something like that um, but for the most part it just it just kept growing and growing I was always just like obsessed and then I, I went to, uh, I met these guys at College of the Desert when I, first I was an architecture major for some reason. Yeah, and yeah that's I, architecture. I took, I took one music class. <laughs> see one architecture. And it was done. And it changed, I was like, what am I doing with my life? You know, I'm, I'm a music major. And so I, I went back to, uh, to school to do music and that's when I met these guys and then I think all of us collectively just kind of crossed paths at the right time where we were all just obsessed with our musicianship because that was always what I was lacking. You know, I, I spent all this time like looking like tabs on the internet, learning by ear, but I, I just couldn't take it to the next level. And I just had all this knowledge after that. And like, it just had this thirst, you know, like that's what I was missing is I had the thirst, but I didn't have the tools to pursue it. And then once I kind of like got a, I just kind of got my bearings with my instrument and I kind of knew what I could, what I really wanted. It just really gave me that laser focus to figure out like all these other styles of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guitar, I'm a rock guitar player, but I studied jazz and I feel like I, the jazz comes first. You know, I'm a jazz musician that plays rock, you know, for better, or for worse, just because as jazz, you can do anything. Yeah. You can ask a jazz player to play rock. If you want a rock musician to play jazz, they can't play jazz. You know, and that's the point of, like, just kind of being more well-rounded as a musician. So I think that was kind of, it's funny that I, when I was growing up, I wanted to be technical and flashy. And then as I grew up, I realized that I just, I really did want to be more rounded. You know, that's what I wanted, to be able to do everything. And that kind of just works out the way with how the band is. But, yeah, long journey. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, mine's is actually very similar to Christian, um, but growing up, both of my parents, they had like opposite sides of the uh, music taste. My dad loved the cumbias and he liked drinking. So <laughs> <laughs> he would just be in, you know, blasting them nonstop. I hear, you know, it, Los Angeles Azules, you know. Um, Saturday's it? cleaning and fucking music. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but then when my mom would clean, I'd hear, you know, Bonnie Tyler, Foreigner, um, Chuck Berry, had a number. Like she just had this whole different repertoire. And I, I, I remember just growing up, I loved it, but like it, it was just kind of like a, like a little fan, like, you know, kind of from the sideline, a little thing. And um, one of my friends in high school, her name was um, Ivana, not from Austin Powers, but she uh, <laughs> you know, you know what? The story she is from Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, uh, sophomore year, she just, um, like, she was literally like the emo look and everything. And I had brought an album. It's like a Christian rock album or something else like that. And she's like, nah, dude. And <laughs> she threw it away. And then the next day she brought over uh, two, uh, two discs. It was Avenged Sevenfold, Waking the Fallen, and Toxicity by System of a Down. Uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, awesome. Awesome. A7, I love A7X. Yeah, yeah A7X dude. Oh, shit, yeah. Bro. game over. I was like, what the hell? And I heard the drums. I was like, oh my God, what the f is this? <laughs> like double bass pedal, just gnarling. And as you know, I, I love the drums, but for some reason I tried to pick up guitar. Completely sucked. You know? <laughs> I was like, yep, yeah, my fingers can't do any of this. And then um, I think after I gave up on that, a friend of mine brought me a, a flyer for like drum lessons. And um, I just thought, oh, okay, let me give it a shot. Why not, you know, see what happens. 
I met a, a my drum instructor, or actually now he's my mentor. His name was a uh, Rocky Castaneda, mm-hmm. and he loved like metal, it, all that type of stuff. And yeah, once I started hitting it off with him, like I would have like eight hour uh, lessons with him. He would let me come to his house to practice, and it was like a big old eight piece Tama kit, like just badass thing. Yeah, and, and that's where it started growing. But like I, I was kind of late to the game, I guess. I was like seventeen when I started doing it, but. I think when we finally moved here and I met these guys, I, I realized, although I loved metal and I love just, you know, just fucking, you know, hitting the shit just out of it. Breaking shit. Yeah, out. exactly. Just going for it. We <laughs> love seeing you hit the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> just letting you know that right now. Thank you. Yeah. I, I realized, do you guys, though, do you guys have like a good uh, drum solo on Metal Reset? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we, we oh, try yeah. to throw you that do for um, him every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot somebody... I was at a concert. Who was? It? I know a lot of them do it, but they do. Oh, it was. I think it was Mana. Okay. They do like a three sixty. Oh hell yeah! Like a one drum day. solo, and then the Tommy Lee. They, they one yeah. time they, the the stage went upside down, and the drummer was. No, that's our plan for him oh, in the future. Dang. You guys gotta do like a chum. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm down. You know already. We're gonna hang him upside down, but just the drum kit's gonna stay the same. <laughs> I'm still going air drumming the entire time. <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, and I think after all that had happened, I moved over here. That was probably 2010. You were in Par- Paramount. I was in Paramount, yeah. And um, I auditioned for the uh, COD jazz band, actually, and I was like, I got this. It's jazz, you know. It should be easy and everything. <laughs> oh, man, I got humbled within, like, the second I sat down. <laughs> Play a swing group, huh? You know, it was like, uh, it was like comp, this and that, and I, I realized at that point, I was like, oh, okay, I, I don't want to just, you know, be a drummer. I want to be a musician. You know, I want to be able to be thrown in at any type of style and then they say, hey, play this and immediately just be able to pick it up. And yeah. I think if it wasn't for all those experiences, if it wasn't for all the stuff that had happened and, you know, meeting them and the way we got together, we probably we would not be here, you know, because... Giselle throws those curveballs all the time. Let's go from a reggae to a cumbia. You know, let's just shift immediately at like you know the drop of a pin. And I love being able to you know be a part of that. You know, being the group where we can do that. Oh, that was my dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I, I don't know anything about music. I don't even know how to read like a music note. Uh, like I never took what because you know in high school like middle school is like arts. Mm-hmm. So my art classes were like in video. I was like broadcast mm-hmm. in middle school and then in high school I did like video productions. Definitely got uh, the Ooh. digital world kind of came a little after. Um, so see, I'm <clears throat> I graduated in '03, <laughs> <laughs> and um, as I was graduating, they started to have the the more of a digital art graphic classes in high school and stuff like that. So I get like how the the younger gen like. I see like the younger generation being way more savvy, like podcasts, uh, you know, TikToks or making videos or this and that, you know, because you guys were all taught that in school, which is badass. Like, mm. so I, I love, I love that. I love that it's gone digital because it helps to know how to how to live or social be social. Yeah, uh, the world is just too too digital now, which. Yeah. Some people complain about it. I like the being able to connect and people yeah. putting themselves out there now. Like with TikTok, you start seeing like right, like people were making content maybe like five years ago, but not really. Yeah. With TikTok and like reels, people are just like making little cook videos, cooking. See, I wish I, I I wish my high school taught me that. I just remember Mesopotamia and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't get taught any of that. So cool what do you know? Digital what do you, arts what do you know about Mesopotamia, nothing. bro? <laughs> You ever heard of grazing? <laughs> <laughs> the the Nile the River. <laughs> the Euphrates. <laughs> the Euphrates. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I remember that. Like, when I, when I, like, my nephew does art, but he does it digitally. He does it with, like, his iPad and all that stuff. So when I see him do it, I'm like, what you, how do you do that? <laughs> oh, it's easy. You just do this, 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 that. I'm like, no, that's not easy. That's, like, five different things you just did. Like it was nothing. So yeah, I, I yeah, but it's the same thing when it comes to like us doing music. My whole ask is like, how do you know when to play the right note? So what do you mean? How do you know when to play the right note? You just do. No, that's not. How do you know? You just. Well, do. it's it, it's like a whole different thing because music, 
Like, I, I don't even know, like, how anything works. It, it's mean, it's like, almost how, like, a, well, it's, it's pretty much like a language, you know? The, 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 the only thing I know is, like, playing rock band. Like in oh, uh, it's, uh, rock it's band, funny I, you I say that. Hard in rock band. It's funny you say that when I <laughs> rock band. My, what fueled my obsession with guitar and like bass and all that stuff <laughs> was band. the Beatles rock band. Do you remember the Beatles rock band? It was yeah, me playing yeah. that, just going ding 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 ding. <laughs> rock band two was the one man. hitting three little buttons, having the time of my life. They had an ACDC one, um, ACDC live like. I guess it was like an add-on to Rock Band. You you had to buy before that was like DLCs. You actually download from the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you actually had to buy it, and it was um maybe like fifteen ACDC songs that they performed live in. I think it was like in Spain or Chile or somewhere like yeah. in the seventies. So it's just ACDC songs, and so I I mean I. And that's what actually fueled my ACDC obsession for a little <laughs> while. Yeah, in Rock Band. <laughs> I discovered someone. Some people used to hate on. I remember reading articles like actual musicians like your. Not like you guys, but um, they would hate on people in rock band because they're saying kids should be learning how to play actual instruments instead oh. of playing video games. Yeah, it, it's it's. What do you have? I, fun. I, I see where they're coming from, but you know, I, it, but I do get where they're coming from because it is an important thing to learn how to play an instrument. Like it, it is a part of your brain that gets, um, what's the word? Stimulated. Stimulated. Yeah, um, and. It just helps with pretty much, I don't know. I don't know how you guys felt about when we were learning about music, but I remember when we were learning about music and then me going to math class, it seemed so Same much way. easier. Mm -hmm. Like I remember sitting there going, oh, it's just that. I just have to follow that one thing. Mm -hmm. And it was the same with music. Like, oh, when you, when you try to identify certain chords on a piece of music, all you have to do is look for this one thing. And I'm like, okay, so if it's just, I can apply the same way of thinking to math. The same way of thinking to, to English and the same way of thinking to my speech class, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, that's I do. I do think it is important for for um, kids to learn how to play music and how to, you know, even if it's on the most basic level, you know, in the in the in the expressiveness of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are them just smashing oh, on a spot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are them just smashing on a little cardboard box? You know, it, it, yeah. it's not only stimulating in the sense of you know you'll you'll figure out other other subjects to be easier but it's also just an expressive uh form of of, of um it's just an outlet for you and that's that's what i you know i do think it is important for young speaking, kids to learn music and all that stuff speaking of like you know not knowing and this and that like i didn't know either um i the first years of my like musical journey i guess journey I don't even know what I was doing, but I just knew that I liked music and that I could play the guitar, you know, and then, but I had never taken a music class, you know, and I didn't take a music class. I, I was like, you know what, like enough, you know, I can sing, I know I can sing, I know I can play instruments because I could play bass, guitar, and I can do piano. I'm like, I owe it to myself, to my talent to spend time learning. So I joined like the music uh, program at COD. So I learned the fundamentals, you know, you, you take all the theories. Um, and, and so that to me was like, you know what, if this is something that I truly want to pursue, like I need to go to the basics and I need to start from the ground up. And so that was me taking myself, I was, and, and I was like a little older too. I was like in my 20s, like almost mid 20s, leaning towards my late 20s when I started going into COD to learn music. And so, and it's just crazy to be like, write all these songs prior to that experience. Because now it's like just different, you know, now I, now I can paint a bigger picture, you know, but uh School is just something that if you want to go and learn the basics and just go through the fundamentals and stuff. But there's a lot of talented people that are just self-taught, like my parents, you know, like they just you just are kind of like born with this like gift. And you think so, it's it's never too late to learn music and never. learn an instrument? That's what I was saying. I've always wanted to play guitar, to be honest. Never too late. Always, just for fun, but I never It took me seven years to take a lesson. And I was doing fine, like, successful musician before that, you know? 
And it's like, it, again, you know, it's, there's nothing like, I mean, I've, the greatest thing that I got from like, you know, going and learning was being humbled and like not being the best anymore and just going right to the bottom. It's like, you know, and I never really had a problem with that. It was just about like, okay, now I need to like put my head down to the work, you know? And so it's like, I think that was honestly the best thing that could have ever happened to me because again, you know, I was successful, but I was stuck. I, you know, I could, I didn't know where to go. And so, you know, just to add on to that. Yeah. The, 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 the worst thing for anybody who's a musician is fear of failure. Yeah. You have to, you just have to be okay with, yeah, the idea of you're gonna suck and it's yeah. gonna be for a long time. Like I, I think when I first played, I think when I first met you guys, I kind of just kind of got okay at guitar. Mm -hmm. Like I just knew how to do open chords, some bar chords. Didn't know at all how to solo. Didn't know at all how to improvise on the spot. Now I can do it, but. When it I still first, sounded beautiful, no, dude. What no, are you talking but, about? But when, <laughs> when I met you guys, it was, it, 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 was, it, was um, it was, it was, it was, and I had that fear for a long time. Oh man, it's, you know, I'm going to suck. I'm going to suck. I'm gonna, I, just, I suck. And then when we got our first backyard show with our first initial band, we kind of sucked, <laughs> but it was like, it was, it was a good lesson in the sense of, Oh, you need a lot of work. And when you go home after this, pick up your instrument, put in the work. I just remember, and it wasn't like work in the sense of like me grabbing the sheet of music, opening it up and going, this piece, I shall play it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I shall play it. You know? it, was, it was just doing basic stuff because I was already playing bass for, for Christian and Jose. So I was like, okay, let me, let me just figure out groove. Let me figure out a feel. Play one note. Mm-hmm. Just doing that and just doing it over and over again until it finally sounded like something you would hear in an actual song mm -hmm. but man it took a lot of a lot of failures for me to go to that do you it, know it what did. fail means no first attempt in learning uh, man i'm gonna put that on my shirt and sell that. <laughs> yeah no it's, 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 it's kids are you know Failure and the word fail shouldn't even, you know, shouldn't be something that we're afraid of, you know. It's yeah. just we're learning. Of course. And taking piano lessons taught me that, you know, it's like, do it again, do it again, do it again. It's fine. Do it again. Calm down. Do it slower. Yeah, I remember you know, Waddell telling me that. So oh, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the cool part about learning music is that you have to be patient with yourself and you have to know that. The better, the more you practice, the better you're gonna be. The more so, seeing it's not too late to play guitar, man. Yeah, so it's not too late. That's, right. that's it. I'm, I'm gonna start my my YouTube journey, bro. I'm gonna start YouTube channel like day one. I'm all <laughs> <laughs> like day three. He's like playing C violin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just like, okay, this is my first time playing guitar. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm good. <laughs> and playing through the fire and flame. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just like rock band. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the button? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, music's always fascinated me. Like, how do you guys come up with when you make a song because you're a band? Like, do you come up with the lyrics first, or do you guys come up with like a song first? How does that process work? I, I've always been curious. It's we it, one of the first songs that we ever wrote together was a, a cumbia song that we have on this album called Everything. It's uh, it's called Caras, and the way that we wrote it was. I don't know if I had told Giselle to play these chords or what it was, but these chords were just somewhere and somebody spoke them. And then she started going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Let me play that on guitar. So I played it on guitar. And then I don't know if it was you or Christian that said, play it as a cumbia. She started I was playing, playing bass. The, yeah, you were playing bass, I was playing guitar, and then mm -hmm. she started playing it as a cumbia. Dum, 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 dum. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing this line. It, and it, it's, it's from then on, it was kind of a... On the spot, we were able to write the hook. See? Yeah. You know, um, but, but not all songs are like that. Yeah. You know? um, Everything, every song has its own journey. Like, sometimes you have lyrics, and then you find a song that someone else is playing and it just like fits like your lyrics you already have or it's vice versa where like you have a song and then you write the song it's a really good song someone brings a melody and then all of a sudden you're inspired to have like lyrics or something like that it's it's always kind of like moving it's 
I mean, I guess yes to both, like, you know, lyrics first or music first, but I mean, it just depends on the situation. You know, it's just how, yeah, however you get inspired, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we've always had, like, someone will have an idea. Yeah. That yeah. or somebody will just come out of it out of thin air, you know? We definitely like to, I, I mean, I, you know, make time for that uh, in rehearsal. We have our set, like, okay, we, we got to run the songs, and then we have our, are also creative, time to be like okay time. let's just yeah, let's creative. just what do you say mm, just jam. out the cobwebs oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you say <laughs> just out the cobwebs <laughs> so we'll do, and we'll just jam you know um, Chris will be like hey this progression all, sounds all beautiful or like uh, Marco will have uh, you know a bass riff or even he'll pick up the guitar because he's, he's really good at both instruments um, and then I'll just you know do I I because of Christian, how he's very lead guitar, like sometimes I'll figure out the chord, just simple. And so uh, lately we've been, we've got a lot of jams like going on. Um, I haven't showed them, but I, I wrote some words to this jam we were jamming yesterday. So, it, you know, like it. Do you always write like lyrics on like your phone or notepad? Um, yesterday I wrote them on the on the laptop. And Is it I, one of those like whenever you're like you're half asleep and you think of something do you ever like oh let me write down. Well it's mostly like that. <laughs> that's how you create the magic. It's like in the shower and you're like you oh get, shit. Or you get your phone and you're like let's see how this shit sounds. And then you hum whatever riff yeah. you have in your hand you go do. Yeah. Marco will send you a text here and there like check this out. A little like 30 cl- minute. I mean, 30 second clip of something. I know, I'm over. No, 30 second clip of like a, a riff or, or whatever. And I'm like, all right, dope. So all of that stuff is like archived and just like waiting to be explored, you know? Um, in sp- that yesterday in particular, like, uh, you know, just blaze fat real quick and like you just, <laughs> and, and, you know, like, okay. and you can't you clarify know, that <laughs> you blaze fat. <laughs> There's nothing else to do than like my car, my guitar calling me. So, and that's when I can like just, you know, focus on just that and the music and, and stuff and let the words flow. It's know? funny that you said that about like when you can't sleep or something like that. I think yeah. there's a quote, I don't know if it's by a musician or a painter, <laughs> that says like when you're restless at night, that's when you're, that's an idea that's trying to get out. I always think that's like the coolest thing because I can't tell you how many times. I've been like not able to fall asleep and I sit down I pick up my guitar and it's just like whoa nice. <laughs> oh, that's what awesome. is this you know? but I just that quote reminded me of what you said please tell me you recorded those ideas oh yeah <laughs> thank you, you just written songs the <laughs> night I've done uh, where I'm half asleep I have a note uh, on, on my phone uh, for music um, video ideas um, just all kinds of different stuff because comedy <laughs> dialogue like I just think of something like oh I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Maybe one day I'll, I'll shoot a short film and I'm going to use that quote. You know, like, yeah. I just write things down. I have, like, paragraphs of Super just cool. all kinds Post-it of... Post-it notes everywhere? Yeah. Well, That's digital. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm digital yeah, Post-it I, notes. I can't, I can't write for anything. So I just edit these on the phone. So. <laughs> and it's stored into the Google Drive, so yeah. whatever you... Yeah, you no, know, it, it's funny. When I'm, like, coming up with ideas, I mean, I'm sure I'll be coming in there with an idea, but more than anything, when I'm around them and they go, let's jam. For some reason, I feel like all eyes are on me. <laughs> so I have to just, I'm just sitting there going, okay, shit, I'm forced to. Mm. All right. Whatever comes out, it's going to come out. And then sure enough, it'll be, it'll be sometimes, it'll be a really crappy idea. Sometimes it'll be a really good idea. Like the, like the jam we had yesterday. It was, it was, I showed her, you know, I've had this bass for a long time and I've played it for you for a long time. Yeah. Tell me how how you feel. How how what does it sound like to you? Tell you know, push it. Make make me make me write something more. Um, not intentionally saying that, just in, in the sense of like, hey, like, what do you think? What do you, what would you do to this? You know, but yeah, it sometimes it being in a room with them, being forced to <laughs> come up with something, is a great motivator. Also, too, like you know, when it comes to like, you have to be okay with fa- having a crappy idea. And just letting it out there. Like, that's part of that failure yeah. thing, you know? It's like, you have to be completely okay with, like, <laughs> playing something that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And then that maybe, maybe there's something in there that gives you a good idea. That could be, like, the next hit song or something like that. And that's kind of tying back into the, you know, I, I always say, like, you know, your strengths are from your failures. You know, you don't have strength without failure. The two things are 
related to each other, if you will. But like, you know, yeah. you have to be able to just jump off the deep end, you know? Yeah, it's uh, the same thing for us. Like we create videos, like um, you make a video and you learn from that video. And then the next time you do another video, you have that experience. And maybe the last seven videos suck. But you learn something from each each, exactly. each video, and it's just better and, and better. Each one has the best of them. Yeah, yes. it's. Nice. It, it, I guess it's part of being creative. That's maybe yeah. not being afraid of criticism or negativity. How's oh, go ahead. Oh, no, well, you're always gonna have that. That's the thing. I think, like you said, as a video photographer, artist, even painter, whatever you know, you would hope that you could just make something that connects with people, and you know, everyone can share it together. But you know, like you said. You're not going to hit a home run all the time. You know, you got to, all the steps on the way will help you finally get to that little, uh, I don't want to say end game, but just, you know, that one thing that will, you know, hopefully, you know, reach out. Exactly. How's your audience? Because you mentioned your audience, like, do you guys have a demographic? Do you guys look at analytics of who listens to your music? Women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, girls, uh, Mexico, USA, um, just uh, like Argentina. Like I've seen a, a bunch of the, uh different um countries and all that um but at our shows i love it because it's very like young and old like just yeah, yeah. people that appreciate like classic like the classic sounds of rock, or like some people will come up to us and like oh you guys sound like and they'll name like a band from the 60s or something you know like a little bit of psychedelic like you know get lost in the riffs and and, and in the in the groove um and then the spanish aspect uh brings in that demographic you know so you guys like sing spanglish most, most of the song? yeah mm -hmm. uh for the most part if they're not in spanglish they're completely all in it's, english or in, or completely all in that's Spanish. that's that's good that you have that you're able to tap into both because it, it just broadens your audience it does. so much and it keeps you creative you're not in a box oh yeah. yeah with all the and i think that's styles. how we're able to mesh uh those different styles you know uh, being Mexican American, all of us, you know, we have that both sides that that we just feed off of, and and you know, so proud, and why not, you know, like our roots, like, oh, you know, what was the quote from Selena's dad? You got to be more Mexican than the Mexicans, and then prove you're more American. Than <laughs> Americans, <anything>. yeah. <laughs> so. like, I always like that that yeah. quote right there. I was like, "That's something nobody that nobody knows how it is, man." It's like, it's like a <laughs> if they're not Mexican. There's American. a what do you call it? Like a different identity for Mexican Americans because, like, when I'm hanging out with you know my parents or even people at work, I work construction, so like it's mostly like Mexicans, oh, yeah. Guatemalans, you know all that stuff. And then I feel like I'm not Mexican enough. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm hanging out with you know like. Maybe America's other thing. I feel oh, like yes. I'm not American enough. It's it's kind of like a weird mix, you know. Like, like you're stuck in the middle. Almost yeah, kinda, it's right? like oh, I don't you're know. in a gray zone. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, there's a lot of art that's coming out of um from this this type of blend, you know, because there's millions oh, yeah. of people. Like this is like what like fifty million Huge Latinos generation. in the United States. So it's maybe something that hasn't really been tapped into. But I think it's growing. You're starting to see more artists. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just with that Besame Mucho festival, that is yeah. like all of, I mean, for me, uh, all those bands on that in that flyer were like, what the heck? Like, you know, this is the Aki Soy. Like, this is. That's a great lineup. You man. know? And yeah, when I saw it, it, it seemed like sold, someone like, made it up. Like one of those fake lineups. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to make like the greatest and fucking it, lineup ever. For it to have been sold in an hour and a half, sold. Like, and it's at the Dodger Stadium, right? Or, yeah. uh, it's Dodger Stadium. It's like, you know how many people fit in there? That shit's sold. Like, but then it's also like three stages. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to set that up. Like, I went to... Uh, I wonder if they're going to probably set one up in the parking lot. Or yeah, they, they did. I went to oh, Bank okay. California Stadium, which is next to the Coliseum over there in LA. It was uh, it was rolling loud, like 2019. They had a stage right. inside the field, like on the field where the, the LAFC plays. And they had a stage on one side of the parking lot, the other stage on the other side of the, the parking other side. lot. Oh. So we were just walking in, in through the stadium to like nice. different stages so Dodger Stadium it's a little bit bigger stadium so I don't know maybe um, I don't even know where to pick because there's <laughs> there's like three different yeah. artists I want to see from every <laughs> one's yeah. playing and the other one that you want to go see is over there you're like shit I gotta <laughs> run about a, three, a 200 yard dash <laughs> what's um can you guys tell me one artist you guys want to see at Coachella since because you're also 
I mean, you're playing Coachella, but I know you guys want to see other artists Big there. Um, one by one, but you can't say the same one. So it's like, well, what's... One Carly Rae Jepsen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Billie <laughs> Eilish. She's got better than Billie Eilish? Definitely Billie Eilish, yeah. Oh, it's tough. I, I'll say Chami because I saw Isaiah Rashad, like, earlier in the year. Um, just because I spent all all pandemic getting into EDM like I had no idea about any of that stuff and then I got into like all that that's I just dug deep man so I say I say Chami I'm gonna say run the jewels I want to go see run the jewels I just remember that they're playing and they're one of my favorite rap groups at the moment I <laughs> You can't I say just Kanye, looked at left. this. I just looked at the lineup too, and I can't even remember. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. I'm not even. Okay, fine. Since you guys didn't say, I want to see Harry Styles because I just want to see his work, mm -hmm. what he wears. <laughs> I think he's so. Well, you guys funny. have the artist bracelet, so you'll be in the back. Yeah. You're gonna run into a whole yeah. watermelon dress. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also want to see. Uh, I know you just said one. Sorry, Amir and the Sniffers. Oh uh, yeah, Amir and the Sniffers. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Um, oh, dear, dear. I had never really heard of them either. He's a very punk, and it's like a female singer with a, 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 a band so I always try to like see and I learn from you know from the from from front women bands you know like Brandy Carlisle Grace Potter like a bunch of like front women led rock bands so I, I'm really interested in, she's like more punk and she's crazy so I want to <laughs> see uh, I want to I want to take notes I guess you, you can say but um there's a bunch of great Bands, small oh, yeah. and big. The Who as well. I know we can only have one, but <laughs> it's the like Who. a Mongolian. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, they're the best, man. It's like <laughs> when Genghis Khan was coming to your yeah. land to conquer you. That's the music. That's the music they're playing, bro. I feel like there's a, like, there should insane. be a, like a flying like, dragon behind them or something. Like, with there's fire. There's an like, old medieval <laughs> warship coming yeah. to the stage. Yeah. Dude, I want to see that. We'll get rushed in the crowd. That's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to be there for the. And I don't know if it's the who or the huh. I think, I, I I think they go by the who, but I, I could be completely wrong. Huh? 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 Maybe. It's H-U. Oh, you know, like it's uh, it's the, the who is greater huh? than the who. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go listen to what? The who? Oh, who was that? Oh, shut up. <laughs> they played uh, Woodstock, too, the original who. The, not oh, yeah, not yeah, the original. The, yeah. Uh, the, the actual who. Yeah. <laughs> But this band better than the Who. There's a there's a lot of uh, Latino artists this year, which is yeah. the first. In, I remember there was always maybe one. The first year I went to Coachella, so when you were saying I've been to a bunch of my first one was 2009, and the only reason I went was to watch Molotov because oh. they, they played on a Friday, and then I was um, at the local teen center, the Indio teen center. I was hanging out, and then they're like, "Oh, we got Coachella passes, but only one day." They, Back then, you could actually get yeah, single day passes. Day. Oh God, so they're like, which date would you want? And then I didn't even know who the lineup was. I was like 16. And I was just looking. And then I was like, I don't really know music that much. So I was like, oh, Molotov. I grew up listening to Spanish. Yeah. Rock and uh, Espanol. Rock and stuff. So I was like, I'll just go watch Molotov. And then um, I got two tickets for me and my sister. Where uh, I think they played like at 3 p.m. We're just going to create, man, I'm a machino. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was bad. And then, um, so that's the reason I went to Coachella. And ever since I went that year, because growing up in the valley, it was like, oh, Coachella, everyone's walking around naked, people are doing drugs, and, you know, yeah. like, you know, Latino community like to scare you and all that. Yeah. Like, so, I want to be a part of that. Uh, yeah, once you actually I there, you experience the festival, it's like, oh, this is awesome. Like, this Baby is, right there. People, there's little kids with, like, headphones. Yeah. Parents take their, like, I'm, newborns. I'm really excited so because my parents, my tias, tios, like, my, you know, like, older People that never, that they, they think Coachella and they're like, I know, like, hay mucha gente, you know, like, but they're going and I'm excited because, like, it's a different energy at the festival, man. As soon as you walk through those doors, you feel like a kid. Like, at least that's my I love experience. It. I'm like, skipping, dude. Like, I skip. Just can't know when you're, when you're <laughs> in just, line, when you're in line to get yeah. in. And you just hear the bass from the Sahara tent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you just hear, like, when the song ends, and it goes, go, ah. Oh, like, oh, we're almost there, we're almost there. Oh, you're getting me hyped up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting it's, like, 10 days away. Yeah. I know, man. Are you guys, like, super ready? You guys feel like you know 
Oh hell yeah! Yeah, packs a little more. I think all of us are running right now. (laughs) 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 Definitely (laughs) definitely running through our minds right now. You know, lose forty pounds in a day. (laughs) Time with the Coachella body got ten days. (laughs) No, but um, very excited, very excited, uh, ready. Um, Don't necessarily have my outfits yet, but whatever, dude. Like anything. That's how I glitter. I don't care. It's just, <laughs> Glit- just, just glitter, though. She, she puts her clothes on. No. <laughs> it's Coachella. I'm making, I'm making a statement. Yeah. Right. There's got to be a statement. I'm going to steal the knife from Harry Styles. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, right. She went on stage covered in feathers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you would get all the hair. Seriously. Uh, just you know, like, when, when they make like those like um, TMZ or those... <laughs> the, the best dress at Coachella yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's that. go. You'll yeah. be there with all the best of them. <laughs> Lady Gaga will probably take it as a threat and be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> take the meat dress out. Like, I saw that dress. Yeah, I kind of saw that dress. <laughs> hey, that thing literally starts cooking because the sun's going to be like hot. You're just like, well, you're gonna at, see least, at least you get to play indoors so you're, you're, you when you're performing right. should be fun. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that that's exciting cool. do you know what time you guys are playing yet or not not yet I don't know what time but uh, I they need to come out with the set this people need to make their you know that's weird that like schedules. you guys as artists don't even know the set time no. I want to know the set time well, I want to know when to run Go see Run the Jewels. <laughs> yeah. They usually drop the set list as far as like for um like the Monday or Tuesday of the festival. So, yeah. I mean. Oh, entonces um, coming up like next week. Next yeah. week or so. You guys, you guys were probably get notified before they, the general public. They you know? need that though because like that's how you plan your day, man. Like, yeah. When People. Oh, that little map with the time. I, I, uh, so so there's a guy on um, there's a guy on Reddit who does predictions. Circle. He always gets like eighty percent of the predictions right. That's crazy. And he has you guys playing at the Sonora. Well, what time was it? I think it was like 2 or 3 yeah. p.m. That's what we think, too. Yeah. 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 About that time. Cool. 8 in the morning. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I I don't even like to go to the festival early. Like, as I got older, it's like, oh, I don't want to be yeah. in the sun all day. Yeah. But um, I'm definitely going to be there for you guys. Oh, like, I'm going to be so front much. row. Yes. Um, and if you are, hey, we're going to have a liquid death for you. That's, that's <laughs> how you find the cool bands. I remember seeing Kings of Leon. Like midday back in the day, yeah. I black keys and like some nobody tent, and I actually saw both of those fools, like both of those bands headlining too. So like you, you never know when you're gonna find that. Yeah, I remember know. seeing the Alabama Shakes one year when I stuck yeah. in it, <laughs> <laughs> and, cool. and they were around two and maybe three around there, because nobody really knew who they were. But when I heard them, I was like, they need to be headlining. Mm-hmm. What are they doing here? They did. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good music. There's a hundred and like, I think 170 artists at Coachella. So we're not going to know anybody. Like there's maybe yeah. a few that you recognize from the headliners, mm-hmm. but then there's all those like the who that just random Mongolian bands. Yeah. And a lot of people go both weekends, uh, because they want to see all like as, as much as possible. as possible. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I've done the and two you weekends. Must really love music. I'm going to two weekends this year. Nice. Yes. I, I feel like I have to now. Yeah. So you gotta make up. <laughs> he, he has to yeah. this year. Yeah, I've only I've only snuck in once or <laughs> twice. Oh, I haven't gone. A couple times. You never been? Uh, oh shit. You never never go. No, I've all, I mean I live like a mile away from it. I would just... I'm gonna have to where I have to have a medic <laughs> or a spy. <laughs> for her. But not for me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He got excited. <laughs> Get him a beer. He hurt his knee. Give me the ice. <laughs> Two shows coming up. Do you guys have more shows coming up here, Southern California? Where you guys plan on playing next? Um, actually, uh, we got the vault. Oh, it's a special show, right? Four twenty like yeah. little private sesh. I saw that. Um, so we're looking forward to that. It's just gonna be like a chill. You know, celebration of 420, celebration, uh, like a, there's going to be, you know, pre-rolls, there's going to be a dab bar, like, you know, um, then we got Crucial Culture with uh, Mario Quintero uh, to set the vibe. We got Disco coming through um, on the ones and twos, and uh, Seed Planter Media is uh, our, our media um, partner 
for this specific event. And we got popping off pizzas too. Um, oh yeah, we, ugh, those are bomb uh, oven, you know, roasted pizzas. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, oven roasted. Is that even how you say it? Sorry. It is now. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> and um, so yeah, it's gonna be great. You could find uh, tickets at Giselle in the Night Owls dot com. And then uh, coming up. We have May 14th is Oasis Music Festival, and that's going to be badass. We're opening up for uh, White Buffalo. Where is the Oasis Music Festival? Um, it's it's actually this, it's like a festival, music festival, but it reminds me of like South by Southwest. It's going to be in different venues um, in Palm Springs. Okay. So uh, ours, ours is going to actually be at the Plaza Theater which was where the old Follies uh, used to be. And um, and it's a seated, it's just this theater, like it's this historical theater. My mom, you know, when she was going to high school in Palm Springs High, she, she would, that was like their kick it spot as kids, downtown Palm Springs, like right on Palm Canyon. So I'm stoked about that one. I'm stoked about that. We're playing in that theater. Um, and then... I think... The alibi too, right? Yeah, we, we got to confirm that first. But um, April 27th, uh, opening up for Widow's Peak at the alibi. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Cool. Yeah, I know. So, we got a few things. Um, got a st- yeah, mostly. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, but well, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dropping music too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's one of the most exciting things is... Um, Getting getting the album out digitally, physically, um, and uh, the the date is set for April twelfth. So right before a week from today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that one drops a week from today. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, plus the tooth. Can't wait. Huh? The tenth plus the tooth. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. That's right. Inside jokes. Yeah. And plus the tooth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> that should come off guard. <laughs> for coming on the podcast, like, oh, no, thank, thank you, you man. Like, it's just thank you so much. I, you guys inspire me. You guys oh. are. I'm so excited for you guys. Like, you guys are play no, Coachella, and I'm I'm gonna watch you guys both weekend. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of high energy. I can that. tell you that right now. <laughs> Not literally high, like just high energy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time and for everything you do. Yeah, sure. fun. Thank you guys.